Hi there, welcome to the 2900 series of Love of Quilting. I'm your host, Sarah Gallegos, and I'm joined right now by Colleen Tauke, who is the sewing specialist here at Fonz and Porter. You know, we always talk about how she makes all the magic happen here, so thanks for coming and hanging yeah. out with me after hours here. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it would be fun to talk to you a little bit about machine binding. Now, if you've ever seen one of my trunk shows or come to one of my classes, you probably know that I do everything by machine. Mm -hmm. I like things to be quick. But I know that for the precision quilter, that is not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> That's acceptable. There's more than one way to do everything. Right, right. So it's we're going to go back to the hand finishing. Yeah, the most the precise, binding. right? <laughs> yes. So she's okay. going to give me a little lesson. Okay. When we're putting our binding on, we usually apply a binding to the front side of our quilt and roll everything to the back. Mm -hmm. So as we are preparing that, we can go in and we can take a scissors and I've already clipped the corner here just to reduce the bulk. So I took away that little corner of batting there uh -huh. so that I don't have to run into a lot of thickness when I get to the corner. The other thing I like to do is to work with a straw needle and those are really fine and flexible oh, wow. so that I can get in and out of my stitches really easily and it doesn't leave a very big hole in my fabric, especially when I'm trying to go right into the fold of the binding. Mm -hmm. So when we go to prepare then and roll the binding to the back sides, a lot of people will ask, well, how far do I roll that fabric to the right. back? Do I roll it as far as I can and then have a really tiny, tiny binding on the front? But most of us will say, take that fold of your French fold binding right to the stitching line and you can see the stitching line we made here in red. What is the so. width that you like to use on your binding strips? Two and a quarter is what okay. we use in the magazine. Some mm -hmm. people like two and a half. Some will go down to two. Okay. So there's kind of a, a range there, but a lot of times we are, we are using two and a quarter inch okay. binding. So what we're going to do is roll it right to the stitching line. We're going to come underneath here and kind of hide our knot in our thread in the seam allowance. So it's tucked away. And I noticed too that the knot is only in one layer of thread, so it's just one layer going through. Yeah. If I want to hide my stitches, I need to have as, um, that one layer of, of thread so it'll bury itself. Mm -hmm. So I've come up from the back into the fold of my binding. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take a stitch into the back of my quilt, right along where I've attached my binding. And then I'm going to come back up right into the fold again. Mm -hmm. That straw needle allows me to do that tiny little bite on the edge and then just give a nice little tug. And we do a quick stitch or two more. You can kind of start to see how, if it was matching thread, it would really be invisible. But with red thread, you can see just a tiny bit you of can red. Barely see it with the red, even though. There. So I really tug it and it buries down in there very nicely. Now, as I'm approaching that corner, you can see that I've already kind of gotten the miter ready to go. Mm -hmm. I'll lay this back just a little bit more. I'm going to take that, the binding that's still extended here and I'm going to fold it back and create a perfect miter right into the corner of mm -hmm. my quilt. Now sometimes when you're working on these, you'll, you'll find that you won't get a kind of a point to the end of your quilt, but you get kind of a roll. Now I'm taking a, a bite into the backing of my quilt and right into the edge of my miter. Uh -huh. Pull, and then just a couple, two or three stitches right along that miter. Again, matching thread is a lot more forgivable than red. Sure. But just a couple of stitches there. A lot of times people will say, do you close your miters? And that's what it means to close the miter, to take a couple of stitches right along that fold. Then I take the needle and drop straight down to the front side of my quilt. And if it's proper placement, it should be right along the miter fold on the wow. front, which it happened perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you have to take a couple of stabs at it to get it. Now I'm taking that fold again and I'm going to take a stitch. It may look a little awkward from there. I'm trying to get the camera to be able to pick it up. I'm going to take two stitches to hold the fold in place there. And now I'm going to drop my needle to the back side. You can see I'm bearing it back to the back side of my quilt. And kind of at an angle, right, right into miter. the corner. Nice. <laughs> so if I pull, tug on it, I've closed the miter here so my fingernail can't go into that hole yep. in this space and here. And now I'm in the perfect position to just finish go on my merry way down the other side of my quilt. And all the way through. And that's how you have a perfect clean finish on your binding. So if you want to do it the quick way, decorative stitches on your machine can be really fun, but if you're hoping to win the blue ribbon at the fair, make sure you practice Colleen's technique. <laughs> Thanks.